Despite the never-ending snowstorms, plans are underway for the PEI Farm Centre's Legacy Garden in Charlottetown. This garden was established last year as part of the 2014 celebrations with a hefty $175,000 grant to get it started. In just one season, it's become one of Canada's largest urban gardens. And now there are plans to grow the Legacy Garden. But that also means finding some new funding. In a few minutes, we'll hear from Phil Ferrero from the PEI Farm Centre about the financial side of things. But first, Island Morning's Nancy Russell digs into the plans for expanding the garden in 2015. Uh, my name is Adam McLean. I work with the uh, PEI Farm Centre Legacy Garden. Any change in the number of gardeners next year? What are you planning? It keeps growing. <laughs> so we're about up to 110 gardeners at this point that are registered. And then we anticipate another boost in the spring as the thaw comes. So we're currently meeting as a group to organize ourselves to uh, get ready for the next year. You have unlimited space. How many can you accommodate? Well, we don't have unlimited space. It's surprising how tight it will get out there. We have eight acres to work with. We're making a a point to accommodate as much interest as is possible around the garden because that's when we achieve a certain critical mass as as the numbers get up a lot of these gardeners are incredible volunteers and bring so much to the project as a whole that um, we're very reluctant to turn any away So there'll be room. We'll find room. And any idea when you're hoping to plant? Yeah, well, some people are putting seeds in for the long season crops now, such as the onion sets. So there's there's some there's some hope there. It's going to be uh, quite a long thaw. There's a lot of frozen moisture out there. Early May, hopefully. We had a late spring last year, and we had to build the garden. So this year, all those garden beds are ready to go. They've been mulched and cared for at the end of last season in preparation of the spring. So as soon as that snow's gone and the soil dries up enough, you know, this is the other big challenge working with gardeners is to hold back the energy to the proper time to start working that soil for a good, healthy season. But, you know, hopefully early May, mid-May. Is there anything new that you're planning to add to the garden besides a whole bunch of new gardeners? More gardeners. And then uh, some more landscaping as well. A lot of the uh, additional uh, trees and shrubs, the native plantings, we started some of that last fall. We'll continue this spring and this fall coming up. What's going to be new this year with gardens that are growing produce for food banks and other agencies? Well, last year we grew a large amount and diversity of food for the service organizations. Uh, this year we'll probably reduce our diversity a little bit to some of the key favorites that were really uh, appreciated last year. And the gardeners and volunteers themselves will be taking on more responsibility for that. So we have small teams of people forming groups of three to five community gardeners and volunteers to take on responsibilities for certain crops such as the beans would be one group of people and sweet peas would be another. We're trying to encourage a more decentralized care of that project going forward uh, where more people are involved in growing that food. How much food did you grow for those kinds of organizations last year? Weight is only one indication of food because lettuce doesn't count up next to squash, but there was about 12,000 pounds growing and three harvests a week of fresh greens, peas, carrots, radishes, a whole range of food last year. And how many groups did that support? We were primarily providing food through the Salvation Army and the soup kitchens. And then other groups would come forward from time to time when there was a specific need and they knew of something available here. And then there were still other people who would come to help in the garden and take home a harvest based on their contributions. What were the most popular crops? Beans, always. Sweet peas, definitely. Sugar snap peas. Those are probably the most popular crops. And the tomatoes. And ones that didn't fly? Well, there's a lot of education around the crops. We had some really great partners in the Salvation Army and others um, that were really focused on preparing foods for folks, foods that they might not have been accustomed to, and providing them with recipes. So initially there might have been a little bit of hesitation around kale and leeks and um, collards and Swiss chard. But with a little bit of help, uh, folks got accustomed to that pretty quickly too. And you put in an an orchard? There was an orchard that was planted in the spring of 2014, consisting of about 80 fruit trees and shrubs. Did you get any fruit last year, or will it be this year will be your first harvest? Well, there were some blossoms and little fruit forming, but we pulled those off so the tree would invest its energy in the root system rather than um, the fruit. Orchards are always a long-term project, and this is not a commercial orchard. This is a community orchard, so real focus on community education around orcharding, fruit tree care, but also, you know, community access to the product, to the yield. So it's going to be a multi-year project. This is one year in, basically. Thank you very much. Thank you. Phil Ferrero, I'm the general manager at the Farm Center. 
ask? Well, last year we were very fortunate to be one of the uh, few uh, larger projects from 2014. That was the main source of funding. We got 175000 for that. How do you replace that funding in 2015? Well, that's the challenge of any organization. We're in the process of writing proposals. We're on the cusp of developing a partnership with one of the service groups in town, but I really can't say much detail about that. We're also looking at doing some fundraising events here. And the community garden is really pretty well self-supporting as it is because people pay for the plots there. What kind of operating budget do you expect you'll have for this year? It's a matter of what's necessary and, you know, what the vision is. We'd like to develop an events area with beautifully landscaped themed gardens, primarily with ornamental edibles. You know, that kind of uh, initiative can be quite expensive. What kind of budget would that have if you had your dream and could put it in this upcoming summer? I mean, ideally, I'd love to have the same amount of funding we had last year. I know that's not a reality. Somewhere in the vicinity of half that, maybe seventy-five to $100,000 going toward plant material, possibly a gazebo, a permanent stage, or even a, a stage similar to what we had last year, which was a, basically a hay wagon. But, you know, we might have to phase that in over time. Whether we can attract that much funding again for this year or we have to look at a three- or four-year plan to, to get that far as I say, the amount of community support that I see coming into this, I think we'll get somewhere close to those dollars. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Phil Ferrero is the general manager of the PEI Farm Center. And before that, we heard from Adam McLean, who's the manager of the garden last season. They were speaking with Island Mornings' Nancy Russell.